Shalom, shalom. We are coming now again to you with a message that is very, very important in our lives. And I'm so thankful that I have Monica here with me. She just came yesterday after a real tough flight here. here. She took three days for what takes 10 hours, <laughs> but she kept her faith. And, uh, and now uh, we want to speak about faith. Uh, uh, sorry, about joy. Joy. And uh, we want to read some scriptures to you first. Monica, read John 15, 11. I have told you these things so that my joy and delight might be in you, and that your joy may be made full and complete and overflowing. Hallelujah. Then in Philippians 4, 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. In Thessalonians 5.16. Rejoice always and delight in your faith. In Psalm 16.11. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. In Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And now in Nehemiah 8.10. It says, And do not be worried, for the joy of the Lord is your strength, and your stronghold, and your stronghold. Yes. Amen. And then in Habakkuk 3.18. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will shout in exultation in the God of my salvation. Yeah. <laughs> And you know, some people say, well, but in these days, there's not much to be joyful about. <laughs> so it doesn't say feel joy, mm -hmm. but be joyful. And uh, you know, joy, the word joy, J-O-Y, to me, is not happiness. It's Jesus, others, yourself. So you can only have joy in a permanent way if you have Jesus in the center of your life. Amen. 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 So, Monica, I, I would like for you to just tell us what you went through in the last three days okay. and how God carried you through. Amen. 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 <laughs> I started on Saturday, three days ago, um, in Germany, Frankfurt, with my flight to Mama Maria. And, um, in, in Uganda, in, Entebbe. In, 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 to, to, to Entebbe, yeah. <laughs> Um, but um, the first flight, they don't uh, bring us to Istanbul like it was the plan before. They brought us to Ankara. And so I found out that will be a problem <laughs> to come to Uganda in time. So we had to stay the night in Ankara and the next day they f um, the flight was to Istanbul. But on, this, on the first day when uh, I feel something is wrong, I decided, <coughs> no, I will keep my joy. Jesus, everything that you prepared for me, I will, I will take with joy and I will keep my, 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 peace. my peace, yeah. So we came to Istanbul, um, but there was no flight. So I had to, day, to be there another night. The next day we came to the um, airport and we were just before um, the, the boarding and they told us, we are sorry, the, <laughs> it's, it's, it's canceled again. Um, but it was really fantastic. Um, God gave me a group of people around me um, who helped me also with all the luggage and all these things. And it was really possible to keep my joy. I, I thought, okay, Jesus, if you say, this is what I have to go through, it's okay because I know you are here. You are with me. I'm not alone. And that was, this is something, when, when I know Jesus is with me, it, it fills my heart with joy. And there's nothing that can keep this joy from me. Amen. And yesterday in the evening, I came here Amen. and I was welcomed by Mama Amen. Maria. Amen. And I'm Amen. so Amen. happy to be here. And now my joy is yeah. <laughs> overflowing. And we really prayed that she would not give up. No. Also her faith that what God starts, he finishes. Amen. Amen. And now we are expecting the greatest time here Hallelujah. in Uganda. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, for me, <clears throat> I want to now share with you uh, because you may say, well, wait a minute, if you knew my situation, you would say uh, this is not something to be joyous about. 
And uh, there were many situations in my life that uh, the devil wanted to crush me mm -hmm. and to take away my hope of life and everything. And, uh, and you know what? I had to say many times in my life, Lord, I don't like this situation. I don't understand it. I didn't pray for it. <laughs> but I will say thank you. Amen. And I said thank you until I realized joy was there again. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, it was amazing. God has carried me through now for many, many years in a, in a strong faith because I do believe that God makes no mistakes. Mm -hmm. And everything that he allows to come into my life, he has tested before. Yeah. And when I keep my joy in the Lord, that is, that delight yourself in the Lord, knowing that God makes no mistakes, then the outcome was always a joyful shock Amen. to me. Amen. Amen. Yeah. For example, you know, one of the biggest, biggest painful situations was that when my husband died. We had such a good marriage and we had such a fruitful ministry and, uh, and then God takes him home. But I wanted to die with him. I didn't want to continue living alone anymore because now I knew mm -hmm. what it means to be together with somebody that you flow in the spirit. And, you know, one beats a thousand, two beats ten thousand. Mm -hmm. And it was the hardest thing to trust God that he will continue with me. But my husband, before he died, Herbert, he always said, Maria, God has such big plans for your life. Yes. And... Uh, and you look to Jesus, and he will give you strong men and women, and you continue. Oh, I couldn't care less about the great works that God had. <laughs> I wanted to die. But finally, you know, I believed. I believed these words, and mm -hmm. I trusted. And I said, Lord, I'm yours. You can do with me what you want. And, and you know, it has come exactly like, like Herbert prophesied. And the biggest plans in my life have been possible after Herbert was called to heaven because he didn't want to move to Africa anymore. <laughs> but God had to set me free to come here and experience the greatest joy, how God is strong in the weak, how God is strong in those that are just available to him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, for centuries we have prayed, your kingdom come. You will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And uh, we have prayed that, but we have lived very often. I, myself, and me, Lord bless us three. And God has to reduce us to zero. We need to know, I am not what it takes, I can do what it takes, I don't have what it takes to be a kingdom citizen. Then we are humble enough to hang ourselves to Jesus, to trust him, to make him number one. You know, for me, Daniel is such an example. He was a very good friend of the king. And when you have, when you have favor, when you are blessed, you have enemies. You have people that envy you and that are jealous of you. And they wanted to get rid of him. And so they told the king in those days, you, are, we have, you know, we have people in this country that have another king besides you. And they look for another, to another king for the solutions of their lives. And that was, not, that was uh, not very pleasant for that king. And so they, they convinced him that everyone that does not only worship that king should, should be killed in the lion's den. And, you know, the king never expected that he was really signing the death sentence for his best friend, yeah. for Daniel. But then Daniel found out. He went to home, and you know, he didn't hide in a basement. He opened the windows wide and prayed to his God louder than before, and praised his God. He was not afraid of dying. He was not submitting to the orders of a worldly command. God was number one in his life. And they were just happy that it was so easy to eliminate him. They went to the king. And the king had to stand to his orders. But yeah. he was shocked. And Daniel was brought into the lion's den. And you know what? The king couldn't sleep all night. He was nervous. He was hoping that the God of Daniel would save him from these lions. Because these lions, I promise you, were 
hungry. Mm -hmm. And they threw him in the lion's den, and the lions did not. I asked Lord, why did they not kill him? The Lord said, because they didn't smell anything eatable anymore. Yeah. You know, there was no fear. There was no fear. There was just spirit. Daniel was just spirit. And the animals could not smell anything that could be eaten anymore. And I, I, I promise you, I believe that Daniel slept on one of those lions <laughs> and another one gave him a cover and they were best friends and they just purred like pussycats. In the morning, the king, you know, he couldn't sleep all night. He ran to the lion and screamed from far away, Daniel, has your God protected you? And you know, Daniel, he, he said, you know, he, he, he wasn't worried. God was the center of his life. He was totally submitted to the will of God. He was also willing to die. But he screamed, yes, king, the, the Lord has protected me. And, and the king was very happy and took him out. But then came to me something that really crushed my heart. Then all those people that were responsible for Daniel to get into the lion's den were, were thrown into the lion's den with their wives and with their children. And that to me, you know, you man, you have such a responsibility for the spiritual leadership in your families. Those children had nothing to do with it. The wife didn't have anything. But the husband is responsible for the spiritual leadership. Mm -hmm. And then Daniel became even the greater collaborator with the king, you know. So, I, I, but he has, he really rejoiced in the Lord always. He was even willing to die. You know, there's also a scripture in Revelation that says, and they overcame him by their testimony, by the blood of Jesus, because they didn't love their lives unto death. So, you know, we, we should keep our joy at, in all situations mm -hmm. Amen. And, not, and not think like the world thinks. You know, what is this life on this earth? It's just a pfft, compared to eternity. So, you know, you can do to me what you want, where you want, how you want. I always say, Lord, thank you. I don't understand it. I don't like it. I don't have prayed about it. But I thank you for it. And with the thank thanksgiving, you keep your heart joyful. You keep your heart trusting God more than the circumstances. Mm -hmm. So, you know, joy means Jesus, others, yourself. Keep Jesus in the center of your life. Mm -hmm. It says even in Psalm, I think it's 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord. And delight is even more than joy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's crazy joy. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. It says in, uh, in John 15, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you can ask what you want and it will be given unto you. It says in uh, Matthew, I think it's 6, 33, uh, Seek ye first my kingdom, my righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. Dear ones, it says here, rejoice always. And then it says uh, that we should not be worried. We should not be worried for the joy of the Lord is our strength. And it's not a feeling, it's a decision. It's a decision. I have already been crying and joyful at the same time. Mm -hmm. But it's not a joy of the world, it's a joy of the Holy Spirit. So we would like for you to write down all the situations that you don't like and start thanking God. Thank you, God. Say, Lord, I don't like it. I have prayed about it and I, I don't understand it. But thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't feel thank you. Thanksgiving, but I thank you because you make no mistakes mm -hmm. and God does make no mistakes. So we trust that you can rise up above your circumstances and just say, thank you, God. You will work it together for something good because I trust in you. And, and I have experienced it and Monica too. Yes. And we want to tell you, be heroes of faith and trust God and thank him for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. <laughs>